them to the sleuth booth. One second. Hello and welcome to the sleuth booth. And uh, we're going to be checking out some more information on missing the missing young 20 year old girl from the United States, uh, Leticia. Uh, Leticia. I'm, I'm not 100% if I'm pronouncing this right. I'm sure. I was trying to listen to Brian Enton this morning when I got up. Because obviously he did, uh, he did, he filled in for Banfield last night and he covered this. Um, but it was about, I think it was 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, so that would have been about, I don't know, 3 a.m. for me. So I watched it this morning, uh, shortly after I woke. And um, I was trying to pronounce it correctly. But I've, we've been looking at some information today. And... I'm gonna. We're gonna have a little watch of the um, of a clip of when Brian Enton spoke to uh, Letitia Norris's mother uh, regarding this, and we're gonna read uh, this article as well, which I'll leave a link in the description to both of these. So both the YouTube video and the article that we're gonna read uh, links will be in the description. So. I think first of all, um, before we get into the video, I just want to say I am going to do another video on Summer Wells. Um, it's something I've not dived into enough. I mean, after I did the last video where I told you guys I've literally just stepped into this one. I, I've not, I've heard about it, but I hadn't researched about it until recently. And it weren't until after I did the video about Summer Wells that I was able to correct myself and some thing, information that I had wrong. I didn't realise that a bedroom was in the basement for one. So I didn't know that was a, where a bedroom was. Um, I hadn't seen too much of the house. Um, you know, I watched the video, is it with the guy from the interview room? Is it Chris McDonough? Um, when he went and visited them, went into the house and obviously, you know... I mean, everyone's free to live how you want to live, but I think it was probably quite dangerous, uh, especially for children, or even yourself. You know, you have to sort of make sure you <laughs> your environment's safe for yourself. But it seemed like that this was a little bit, um, you know, they were struggling. They were really struggling there. Um, so I didn't know that. I didn't know. Obviously, now I know, you know, how the grandma had a fall and... You know this that and the third and this is why she needed help and um little bits that i didn't know I, I i the only things that i did i was aware of because of is it the is it the dad's sister who claims to have been abused um a lot by her brother um summer's dad uh when they was kids um i'm not sure what type of abuse it was i'm I had an idea, but I, I didn't go, again, I didn't go too deep into it. Um, but anyway, we will be doing another video on that once I've put together, you know, what would, what would be worth talking about in the video, because so much has been covered on other channels already. Um, but we're going to dive right into this. So we're going to check out this uh, video from uh, Brian Enting covering, covering for Banfield on News Nation. And... He's talking to uh, Letitia, uh, Norris's mum. Let's go, guys. Welcome back to Banfield. I'm Brian Enton in for Ashley tonight, and I'm with Cheryl Walker. Her 20-year-old daughter, Letitia Norris, has been missing for more than three weeks after traveling from Indiana to San Diego, California, to be with her boyfriend. Uh, and you told me something earlier, Cheryl, that I want to talk to you about because we do so many missing persons cases and it is so sad that this is a thing that happens. Uh, but, but tell me, you have been receiving fake ransom calls. Uh, tell me what's been happening. Um, most of them come in the form of texts. Um, and they just, they send a paragraph and um, just, the, the amounts are different. They'll demand $7,000, $10,000, $2,000, um, different amounts. Um, and you can kind of tell the way it's worded that it's not legitimate. I just um, kind of, you know, ask them for proof of life. But um, it's still something I wanted to report. And um, I tried to report the first one that came in and it was over Veterans Day weekend. But unfortunately, the missing persons department 
uh, doesn't work on weekends, and they have extended weekends when it's a holiday weekend. So, wait, I called the missing persons department doesn't work. They don't work over the over the weekend. Correct. Yeah, there's uh, there's no one I, I there, mean, so you're told to leave a voicemail. Okay, well that's interesting. Um, but, but back to these these ransom uh, texts and calls. How many would you say you've received? Um, I believe five. Five. And I know. Um, I mean, you're you're desperate to find your daughter. Um, so you've been giving right. out your own your own cell phone number, and you've put flyers up all over San Diego. Um, so I guess it, I guess it wouldn't be that difficult for them for them to track down your info at this point. Right. I mean, it, it is accessible. And I mean, I will say that the detective um, warned us not to do that because people, you know, there's people out there that will try to take advantage of you and they know you're vulnerable. Um, the first flyer that I put out didn't have any contact info for me, but it only took me a couple more days to realize that when I call, I mean, if it's a weekend or a holiday weekend, I'm I can't talk to anyone, and if I call non-emergency, you wait on hold for 15 to 20 minutes, and if someone had some information or a tip, I'd, I'll take the risk on dealing with people who would try to take advantage of us. Um, it's definitely the pros outweigh the cons, because if someone sees her and I can get there, I'd, I'd need to know. It's it's so frustrating and so sad that people people like that that are out there. But there are also so many good people who who are here with you, Cheryl, and have your back. And among them uh, are Gabby Petito's parents, uh, yeah. Joe and Nicole. Both tweeted out pictures of your daughter uh, over the last day uh, and have sort of taken on the case. Uh, and, and they want to help you. Um, and there are lots of people on social media who who have got your back. I mean, is that I would imagine that's at least helping a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is all we've had. Um, and initially, you know, a voice for the voiceless was the first. I reached out to Whitney Sitch and she, I, she just got to work. I mean, she started outreaching and networking and she got us in touch with the Aware Foundation. And, um, they, they, and my husband reached out to Dateline and it just went from there. But they have been working nonstop. And um, I do... Or, I feel so horrible for, you know, the, the Petito family. It's just, I'm grateful that they reached out to me. Um, but uh, it's also kind of, it was kind of a heart-wrenching moment as well. Right. I, I get it. I mean, it's it's not exactly a group that, that you want to be part of, you know, and, and I think we're all hoping uh, and praying right now that, that you don't end up part of that group and that your daughter comes home. Um, so Cheryl Walker, thank you so much for, for being on tonight. Please keep us posted. Let us know what else uh, we can do to help. I'll obviously be following the case closely. I'll, I'll stay in touch with you uh, and, uh, and we'll, we'll be on it. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Can you just imagine, <coughs> excuse me, people are actually like, your, your, you, your child hasn't been in touch with you. It doesn't matter that she's 20. This is a young girl and her mum is so desperate to just, you know, even if she can just hear her daughter's voice on the telephone. That would just be enough just to take away this massive, overwhelming fear and emotions of, like, what has happened to your child. And then, and while you're in that state, sick people out there have got your number from the, from the advert that you've put out, desperate to find your daughter. Instead of using that number to, you know, give you some information that may be beneficial, you know, um, even if you're completely wrong, even if you think you've seen her and you're completely wrong, if you believe deep down you might have seen this girl, then call that number. But someone, people, five people, she said five, didn't she? Five people have gone out their way to basically try and see if they can loot a little bit of cash out of her on some scam, pretending to be, I don't know, pretending to be some 
sinister person like who's kidnapped her and and it, you know if you want your daughter back you have to pay us this when really they're just nobodies and they have no clue where she is it, it just it's like it, you, know, you, you know it's no wonder that the world is always fighting and and nobody trusts each other and you constantly feel vulnerable these days because i mean when you're at your lowest point, that's when you think, you know, people's humanity comes out. You know, when when someone like this is going through pain like this, to me, it's like an inbuilt reaction. It's like an inbuilt thing inside of me that says, right, I, I need to start thinking more humanely. I need to, you know, send my wishes to this person. You know, if I could be of any help, I would be. You know, you kind of just want to tap into your more humane side. But there's so many people that just don't. People that just, I don't know what it is. It just, it's crazy to me. And again, you know, this is a situation where, um, just like Gabby Petito, you know, abusive boyfriend. There's been an argument. No one's heard from the girl since. And... I only found out today, even though I've known about this um, since my last video. It's only today that I realised that she was a, she was quite an avid TikToker. She made a lot of TikTok videos. Now I've not been to her TikTok. Um, I think I may, if it's still there, um, I may check it out just to see. Like you know, sometimes you can sort of read people's character, and you know. It, Sometimes if you watch someone enough, even if they're on video and they're, you know, and they're in their creative side, you can still sort of read if someone might be, you know, in a, in a frame of mind or likely to sort of go, fuck this, I'm just going to disappear. I've had enough of what's this life. You know, I'm not happy no more. But most people tend to, you tend to start to see signs before that happens. They don't just up one day and go. And... You know, and it there's quite a lot of, you know, serious men mental health issues that often come into play for that type of behaviour to come about. But anyway, we're going to read this article. This is on Gramshala, Um And it's quite a, it's not a long, long article, but it's, it's, it's long enough. It's, it's got some good information. So it says here... The mother of a missing TikToker, which is Letitia Norris, um, said that her daughter's boyfriend showed signs of possessiveness and is an addict who fell again, which sparked a fight before her disappearance. See, he's an addict, so you've got withdrawal symptoms, desperation, manipulation. See, an, an addict usually will do anything they can to feed the habit but also protect the habit they'll even go as far as denial denying that it's a habit they'll protect the habit they'll um deceive they'll do all sorts of things to make sure this habit is you know top of top of the priority list Natasha norris mother uh cheryl walker told the u.s grams grams Charla that Joy Smith broke at least four of her daughter's phones during an argument since May and followed, followed her when she tried to calm down after the fight. Norris had a fight with her boyfriend Joy Smith, pictured, uh, are you, what I'll do is I'll make sure you you can see this up on the screen so you can see the picture there, uh, before she disappeared. Missing TikToker's mother claims her daughter's boyfriend showed possessive traits. He was always around her. He didn't do anything or go anywhere without her. More than three weeks after Norris went missing, Walker said in an exclusive event interview Tuesday, he's an addict and went to San Diego to get help, she said. But he was not calm and was living on the streets. On Halloween... Just days after his 20th birthday, Norris travelled from his Indiana home to San Diego to help 25-year-old Smith, according to Walker. 
He told me he's going to kill himself and I can't I can't do that on my conscience, said the mother of missing TikToker. Walker said Norris landed on the west coast on November 1st and uploaded photos and videos of California to his social media account, but his posting was slow. On November 4th, Norris, Norris called his mother using Facebook Messenger from his phone. The next day, Norris and Smith make a frantic call to Walker saying they have gotten into a fight. He always did that. Every time they got into an argument, he called me up and asked, where's Letitia? Where's Letitia? Uh, what is she doing? The phone call was the last time Walker heard from his daughter or her daughter's boyfriend. Before the young woman's mysterious disappearance, she shared a cryptic post that read, it's okay to cry. After that, all his social media accounts went dark. Red flags when visiting Smith. Norris first met Smith in April in Indiana and they bonded over tattoo artistry, Walker said. They wanted to do the same thing, so it was a, a conversation start, Walker said, and that was helping her to improve her technique. A few weeks later, she brought him home to meet her parents and introduced him as her boyfriend. She was 19 at the time and, and he was uh, 25. It was a bold move, Walker said. My husband is very protective of, the, of his girls and he showed up at our house with this 25 year old man and said he was her boyfriend. She told me then that she was completely infatuated with him. Warning signs flashed during the first visit that worried the mother. He spoke really fast like he was on pace. He goes in and out of the house for a smoke every 10 minutes. My husband asked him if he liked meth. Of course he said no and, late, and latte water, but I'm glad he did, Walker said. Uh, at times she did things like carrying her purse it was cute, but it was all a cover. It was a pre it was a present, she said. A present. Letitia is vigorous. Whoever wrote this got really poor English, by the way. <laughs> Letitia is vigorous and strong-willed. She's a lawyer. She goes after the bully, Walker said. She saw Joy as worrying, but it was possessive. Norris's mother said she couldn't get away from him. Walker and her husband have been posting signs in San Diego and searching for areas they knew she was. Uh, but he isn't getting much help from San Diego police, Walker said. The police told us they don't believe uh, she is at risk, she said. But social media and their friends and family have been helping and sharing contact information. One of Norris's friends started the hashtag Find Letitia. Uh, which has been used on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter and Facebook groups. Um, they also started a GoFundMe with help to help with travel costs as, family, as the family moves. Uh, TikTok. Uh, so and then there's some images. Images, the information there. Guys, I'll put a link to this in the, in the description as I say. Um, have a good look at it. Um, as I say, some of it, like the article's not written very well. Like sometimes it says he when it should say when it should say she. And I think I read it out that way. So if you got confused, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Like it's almost like I don't know the person who wrote it um, rushed it. But the information is there, and it did sort of uh, corroborate with what I heard on News Nation. There was another video on News Nation. Slightly longer than the one we just watched, and um, some of what was said in there is what the what the mother did say. So it's not there's no falsifying facts here. It just poorly written, but um, it was very hard to find any articles other than News Nation, and here in Europe, we can't access NewsNation.com because of some laws, different different internet laws or whatever, they are working around it. Uh, but for some weird reason, if I go to 
uh, newsnation.com I can't read it it just won't let me go past it just says like you know because of European laws but anyway guys I thank you all for stopping by um, let's get the word out let's share um, you know share pictures and posters and uh, you know share videos and help each other try and track down where this girl is and you know at least find her and get her home get her some justice something you know at least make sure she's safe and also make sure you go and check on twitter and instagram twitter's been my favorite so far um because if you go onto twitter um go pay attention to all the people that are missing there is so many missing people from all around the world all around the world um i'm following so many people now and i'm seeing jesus man there's just so many people missing so guys make sure you go check them out and make sure you go share and let's get some of these people I, I would like to think we could get all of them home but we have to be realistic and try and get as many as we can safely home guys you've been in the sleuth booth